After studying this module, you shall be able to learn the subdivision of journal, understand the concept of subsidiary books, learn the methodology for cash and non-cash books, know the utility of subsidiary books, know the various types of subsidiary books, understand the difference between cash book and cash account, identify the objectives of preparation of subsidiary books. In a large business, when the business transactions are numerous, it is difficult to record all the transactions in one book of prime entry that is the journal book. It is equally applicable where similar types of transactions are large in numbers. For example, in a business if most of the transactions are related with purchases and sales, then it is convenient to prepare and maintain separate book for each type of transactions. These books are called as subsidiary books or book of prime entry. Usually a journal is subdivided into these types of books. Number one, cash book. Number two, purchases book. Number three, sales book. Number four, purchases return book. Number five, sales returns books. Number six, bills receivable book. Number seven, bills payable book. And number eight, journal proper. Now we can discuss about advantages of subsidiary book. The maintenance of subsidiary books has some advantages. Firstly, it can be division of work. Since so many books are maintained under this system, the accounting work may be divided among number of employees depending upon the number of transactions. The second can be specialization and efficiency. If a particular type of book or same work is handled by a particular person over a long period of time, then such person becomes specialized and expert in that area and the work is done efficiently. The third is early completion of work. The various accounting processes can be undertaken simultaneously by a number of persons. This facilitates quick and early completion of work. Then specialized information. Under this system, each class of transaction is recorded in a separate register or book. Thus, the related summarized information becomes available. The fifth one is easy detection of error. The existence of separate books also facilitates easy detection of errors in case trial balances does not agree. Now let us look at cash book. The meaning of cash book. It is a primary book of original entry in which all cash transactions of the enterprise are recorded in a chronological order. It is a journal because all cash transactions are straightway recorded in the cash book and on such basis postings are made to various ledgers. It is important to note that there is no need to prepare cash account because cash book reserves the purpose of cash account also. Therefore, cash book is a part of ledger also. Hence, cash book is both a subsidiary book as well as a principal book. Now we can discuss some of its features. Only cash transactions are recorded in case of three column bank transactions are also recorded. The debit and credit sides of cash columns are used for cash receipts and cash payments respectively. The simple cash book is like an ordinary account. The cash book serves the purpose of cash account, hence cash account is not prepared when cash book is prepared. It does not record non-cash transactions, discount and check received or paid. The balance shows cash in hand. Since cash paid cannot exceed cash received, there can never be any credit balance. Kinds of cash book. The main cash book may be of three types. Number one, simple cash book. 
It is prepared like a simple cash account with one column on each side. This column is used to record cash receipts and payments to the debit and credit side respectively. The cash book is prepared in T-shape format in this manner. Now we can discuss the details of each column. First one is date. This column contains the date of the transaction. The second one is particulars, the name of the account under which cash has been received or paid using to or by in the debit and credit side respectively. Then there is V number, this column reflects the voucher number. Then there is ledger folio, this column reflects the page number of the ledger where amount is posted. Then the amount. The amounts received and paid are written on the debit and credit side respectively. Then comes balancing. The cash book is balanced like any other account. The total of receipt side is always greater than payment side. The difference is written as buy balance CD on the credit side of the cash book. Then ledger posting. After recording in cash book, they are posted to respective ledger accounts in order to complete the process of dual entry concept. The receipts and payments are posted to credit and debit sides of respective ledger accounts on the date of transaction itself. Now we can discuss about example. Enter these transactions in a simple cash book also give ledger posting in rent account and muskan's account. We can see this on the screen. Then there are ledger postings which discuss about rent account. Then there is Muskan's account. Now we can discuss about double column cash book. This cash book has two columns on each side. To record cash transactions and discount allowed and discount received. The debit and credit sides of cash columns record receipts and payment of cash. Discount allowed and discount received are disclosed to the debit and credit sides of discount columns respectively. The cash book is prepared in T-shape format in this manner. Now coming to the balancing, the cash columns of the book are balanced in the same manner in which single column cash book is balanced. But discount columns are never balanced and they are merely totaled. Ledger posting. There are two types of postings. First one is cash columns. The process of ledger posting is same as is applicable in case of single column cash book. Then discount columns. The total of debit side of the discount column is posted to the debit of discount allowed accounts. Similarly, the total of credit side of discount column is posted to credit side of discount received account. The third one is triple column cash book. The cash book has three columns on each side to record the cash transactions, bank transactions and discount allowed and discount received. The debit and credit sides of cash columns record receipts and payments of cash. Similarly, the debit and credit sides of bank columns are used to record deposits and withdrawals from the bank. The discount allowed and discount received are disclosed to the debit and credit sides of discount columns respectively. The cash book is also prepared in T-shape format in this manner. The balancing. The cash and bank columns are balanced at end of the period, but discount columns are never balanced and they are merely totaled. Then ledger posting. There are three types of postings. Number one, cash columns. The process of ledger posting is same as is applicable in case of single column cash book. The bank columns. The process of ledger posting is same as is applicable in case of single column cash book. The third one is discount columns. The total of debit side of the discount column is posted 
to the debit of discount allowed account. Similarly, the total of credit side of discount column is posted to the credit side of the discount received account. Now let us discuss about purchases book. When goods are purchased on credit, it is recorded in purchases journal. The purchases book neither records cash purchase of goods nor purchase of any item other than goods. The entries in purchase books are made on the basis of invoices received from the supplier with the net amount after trade discount. Usually this format is used for purchase books. Now we can discuss about the details of each column. Date, this column contains the date of transactions, particulars, the name of the supplier, name of the articles and quantities purchased etc are entered in this column. The invoice number, this column contains the invoice number of the goods purchased. Then LF, the page number of the ledger at which postings has been made is written in this column. Then details, the amount in respect of each article is written in this column. Any trade discount allowed by the supplier is also disclosed as a deduction in this column. Then amount, the net amount of the invoice is entered in this extreme right column. This is the amount which is actually posted to the ledger account of supplier. Now we can look at another example, Messrs Ramakrishna Stationers provides you this information for the month of January 2050. Then there is prepare purchases books of Messrs Ramakrishna Stationers. Sales book. When goods are sold on credit, it is recorded in sales journal. The sales book neither records cash sales of goods nor sales of any item other than goods. For example, if furniture is sold on credit basis, then it will not be recorded in sales book, rather it would be entered in journal proper. The entries in sales books are made on basis of the invoices issued to customers at the time of sale. Usually this format is used for purchases book. We can discuss about each column. Date, this column contains the date of sale of goods on credit, then particulars, the name of the customer, name of the articles and quantities sold etc are entered in this column. Invoice number, this column contains the number printed on the invoice issued at the time of sale. Then LF, the page number of the ledger at which the account of customer or debtor appears and the corresponding posting has been made is written in this column. Details, the amount in respect of each article is written in this column. Any trade discount allowed to the customer is also disclosed as a deduction in this column. Amount, the net amount of the invoice is entered in this extreme right column. This is the amount which is actually posted to the ledger account of customer. Then there are purchases return. This book is also called as returns outward book and is maintained to record the return of goods to suppliers. The reasons of return of goods may be defective goods, not as per order, goods delivered too late, etc. In all these cases, the purchases prepares a debit note and sends it to the supplier. It is so named because on such basis the account of supplier is debited. This day book is prepared in this manner. The purchases returns day book is totaled at end of the each period. The total of the book is posted to the credit of purchases returns accounts by writing by sundries as per purchases return book. The account of suppliers is debited with corresponding amount on the date of transaction itself by writing to purchases return account. Then sales return or returns in word book. It is a book of original entry in which return of goods by customers is recorded. The return of goods may be on account of defects in the goods, 
delay in supply, goods not as per specifications, oversupply of goods, etc. It is important to note that this book does not record return of goods earlier sold on cash basis. At the time of such sales return, a note is prepared and sent to customer giving all details about the date and amount of transaction, name of party, etc. This note is called as credit note. Any trade discount allowed at the time of credit sale shall also be adjusted at the time of receiving goods. This format is used for sales return book. The sales return day book is totaled at the end of each period. The total of the book is posted to the debit of sales returns account by writing to sundries as per sales return book. The account of customer is credited with corresponding amount on the date of transaction itself by writing by sales return account. Bill receivable book and bills payable book. When goods are sold or purchased on credit, the seller would like that the purchaser gives his promise in writing in the form of valuable instrument of credit. The written promise is either in the form of a bill of exchange or in the form of a promissory note. If a firm usually receives a number of these instruments, then it would be convenient to maintain separate books for bills receivable and bills payable called as bill receivable book and bills payable book. These books are journals in which recording is made in a chronological order and these are the rules of posting. Number one, the accounts of individual debtor and creditors are posted from these day books on the date of transaction itself. Number two, the total of bills receivable book is posted on debit of bills receivable account. Number three, the total of bills payable book is posted to credit of bills payable account. And this is the form of day book which are used for BR book and BP book. Journal proper. We have already discussed seven types of books which are maintained for specific purpose. But apart from these transactions, there are other transactions which are recorded in a book called as journal proper. Since residual transactions are recorded in this book, it is also called as general journal. These entries are passed in a journal. Number one, opening entries. The opening balances of assets and liabilities are journalized in journal book when books are started for the new year. Number two, closing entries. At the time of preparation of final accounts, at the end of the period, the nominal accounts are transferred to trading and loss account. This is done through closing entries. Then number three is rectification entries. These are passed to rectify the errors that have been committed. Number four, the transfer entries. These entries are required in order to transfer from one account to another account. Then number five, adjusting entries. These are usually passed at the end of the year for adjustment of outstanding items, prepaid items, interest on capital, depreciation, etc. The number six, miscellaneous entries. These transactions are recorded through journal entries to be passed in journal proper. These are dishonor of bills of exchange, credit purchase of things other than goods like furniture, machinery, etc. Debtors written off as bad debt, transfer of profit to capital account and loss of goods by fire, etc. Now let us summarize what we have learned from this module. To sum up, we can say that in a large business, when the business transactions are numerous, it is difficult to record all the transactions in one book of prime entry. So it is divided into eight different books with cash book, purchases book, sales book, purchases return book, sales return book, bill receivable book, 
and bill payable book and the journal proper. Cash book is used to record cash, bank transactions and discount in case of triple column cash book. Purchases book is used to record credit purchase of goods. Sales book is used to record credit sale of goods only. The return of goods is entered in purchases and sales returns book. The receipt and issue of bills of exchange are entered in BR book and BP book. The transactions which could not be recorded in the seven special books are entered in a book called as journal proper.